and welcome to Unwarranted Music Opinions, the show in which three music nerds take some some albums and just slap each other in the ears with them until we've digested opinions and spew them forth onto each other. Uh, it's a very wet and disgusting process, but it results in conversation and opinions. I'm June Lindbergh here with Brian Courtney. Hello. Hi. And Chaz Jenkins. I've got some serious indigestion. No. <laughs> and today's <laughs> episode is a regular episode. Anything goes. We could talk about whatever the heck we wanted. And we're going to kick things off with Chaz. So the album I picked is Buck Minster by the band Driftless Pony Club. Uh, this was going to be a season one pick way back in the day when we were recording at WMKY, uh, it just never made the run. I had other things that I wanted to talk about. Here we are in season three, so I figured, you know, better time than any, but I've been listening to it a lot more recently. Kind of a nostalgia thing, but I think there's some great stuff to talk about here. Uh, Driftless Pony Club is the culmination of, I guess, famed. I mean, he's one of the OG YouTubers, Wheezy Waiter, uh, Craig. And this is uh, his band. They've been going on for a while now. This album came out in 2011, so that should show you uh, how fucking old this thing is. 11 years, or 10 years now. Uh, indie rock, power pop, that's the genre tags, but it's kind of an unknown album. I think there's more genres out there that can describe the music here. Because, I mean, this is a great example of indie rock, but I think the songwriting, the tones, the the vocals, the the song topics... I think just calling it pure indie rock doesn't do it justice. I'm sure there's a million subgenres that you could tag onto this to to sh fully show what we're dealing with here. The um, only other thing I could think of is like power pop a little bit. That's one of the other tags. Sonically, this sounds, and I know because I've watched Wheezy Waiter and I've seen him talk about Built to Spill and Modest Mouse. Very, very Built to Spill. Uh, like lot of that 90s indie rock, that classic, fairly simple. The guitar sounds even sounds very built to spill. The vocal melodies and the lyrics are very built to spill. Also, um, um, I don't know if they're like a chorusless kind of band, but like there's not I, I don't think there's a lot of memorable parts, but not necessarily like choruses on here, like little there's memorable sections. I don't know. Um, I think the songs are. I'm not saying they're not catchy. I'm just saying they're not. They kind of uh, flow in a pretty linear way. With all that said, though, I personally don't think they're fully wearing their uh, inspirations on their sleeve. A lot of bands can fall into that trap. I think what sets these guys apart are their lyrics. Uh, this album is a concept album in the most nerdy thing you could ever imagine. It's a uh, concept album about American architect Buckminster Fuller. You would never, ever see Built to Spill, Modest Mouse ever writing about some shit like this. Modest Mouse would be writing oh, about... R.I.P. that architect, right? Yeah. Respect. Is he dead? He is dead. He died in the 80s. <laughs> He's been dead. Ooh. That was close. I cut it real close. Only <laughs> like by a couple of decades. I've been fucked up if he wasn't dead. Um, like Modest Mouse, you know, I'm not too familiar with Built to Spill. I, I've... I've seen them, I, but I haven't really gotten the chance to get into them. But Pretty Modest Mouse, indie rock group, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not aware of them either, honestly, or know much. About I think they have more of an emo part. hinge to them, June. I, if I'm incorrect, please correct me. But I think they have more of an emo Little hinge bit. than Modest Mouse. They both kind of came out of the same area. They both have a similar kind of winding indie rock guitar sound. There are definitely some guitar lines, uh, specifically that are very. Built to Spill and Modest Mouse-esque. It's just kind of ramshackle, the whole sound. It's a simple indie rock, but with sort of a loose, maybe kind of about to fall apart sort of vibe. Um, and on this record, that's paired with power pop and just kind of nerdy guitar pop in general. Yeah, what I what I love the most about this is the concept and how it's fully explored. I, I it feels very well put together, fully realized. It's a brisk thirty minutes, easy easy listen. And again, I don't want to fully just write them off as just taking their inspirations and wearing them on their sleeve. I think the songwriting here is fantastic. Every song. There's nothing wrong with that though. Even if they were, you know what I mean. I don't right. Do anything wrong with that? 
And uh, yeah, well, some bands take it a little too far. Uh, you know, the, the most notorious being uh, Greta Van Fleet. Yeah, yeah oh. that's a huge uh, example of where it could go really bad really quick. Uh, but I think these guys have been around for a while, and I think they've uh, set themselves apart enough to where you can see where their influences come, but they still have their own uh, image and style to them. And I think that comes from the songwriting and lyricism. As I mentioned, it's a concept album about a, a famous architect, so a lot of lyrics delve into his life in a very cryptic, very conceptual way. It's not kind of like laying it out. Like, obviously, if you don't do any research, you'll probably have no idea what they're talking about. But in that way, that's kind of endearing because it's so fucking nerdy. It's like, it's, an, it, like it's like the biggest of, inside uh, joke between nerds. And if you aren't in on it, it's going to go right over your head. <laughs> a lot of the tracks have like uh, architecture adjacent names or like have like you know, built like a ship and uh, safe as houses. You know, there's there's a lot of references to buildings, architecture kind of thing going on. Right. And, and uh, the song titles. I, I, what I love most about the songwriting is that there's so many, as Brian mentioned, memorable choruses or bridges or refrains. But the the guitar lines and the bass work and drumming, the way everything kind of flows, it, it is very ramshackle, as June mentioned. It, it just keeps things fresh through the entire runtime. There's never a dull moment. There's never a moment that sounds similar to others. While it has a consistent sound, each song is super distinct. But uh, th those are my basic thoughts. Uh, what did you all think? I honestly like this more than I thought I was going to. I don't like it as much as you do. I don't think that the individual elements are as impressive, I guess, as you think they are. And to me, this kind of feels like another indie rock album from 2011. Not that that's a bad thing. And as you mentioned with the lyrics and the just general approach, they have a lot more personality than just like, you know yet another indie rock band putting out an album in 2011. Like you said, the concept of the whole thing, they have some good guitar lines, there's some catchy choruses going on on this record. And at the end of the day, it's sort of, it's not a bad listen at all. It's a pretty good listen, but it just doesn't excite me that much anymore, uh, especially in 2021. I probably would have listened to this more around the time it came out, honestly, uh, or like 2012, 2013, around that time. I don't know. I, I do think it kind of wears its influences on its sleeve a little bit, even though there are some distinctions. I just think that, in general, the whole product could have used a bit more refinement. Uh, and I, that's somewhat of a pretentious critique but i i just feel like we have something here that has a lot of potential just this idea of making an indie rock album about this old architect guy um and i do think that that idea goes over well i just i don't know uh, it's only 30 minutes long it's pretty short i just wish they would have gotten a little bit more creative in general with the the songwriting and how it's all put together sonically I don't know. I disagree because when you hear songs like he plans houses like trees and that very odd uh, kind of guitar line comes in after the intro, it, it like bum, bum, ba, da, da. or wait, is that is that which song is that? No, that that song is. Um, bum, bum, ba, da, da, bum, bum, ba, da, da. I'm pretty sure that's we're awesome. foaming yeah. out the mouth. It's such an odd uh, line. I, I, I honestly and I mean this fully still haven't quite heard anything that sounds quite like this album in its in terms of its songwriting just some odd choices that i think go over really well that keep it fresh and distinct um as far as the creativity i think how many bands can say that they've written a concept album about a some like famous I'm mostly American talking musically, musically? I, i'm mostly talking just musically and sonically it's a bit standard to my ears as a fan of indie rock I would kind of agree. Like that's what I, I when I'm listening to it, it doesn't really matter how strong the concept or the lyrics are because the songs underneath all of it are just they're either there are some there are some really good moments, but a lot of the time they're just okay uh, to me. Like that nothing about it grabs me. There are some interesting parts. I really like the uh, a couple of the refrains. So it's like uh, you went to sleep, I went to sleep about an hour ago. Like that one's pretty catchy. And the uh, uh, your silence. Your tears again and again and again and like that made me want to come back a little bit. Those refrains, but like 
<clears throat> musically, you know, the guitars don't really get to each part of the songs. Interestingly, it's serviceable. You know, it's not bad. And the album sounds good, too. I do like how clear it is because uh, there's a lot of kind of dueling guitars going on, so to speak. Like I think the synth rhythm, work you know, the is really the... nice, too. The synths yeah, underneath they, that a lot. They play good indie rock. Like, don't get me wrong. But, like, it's just not an album concept or, you know, it's just not a concept that grabbed me. The music didn't really grab me. It, it's just hard to get excited about. You know, it's fine. It's serviceable. I would never complain if this was on, but... It's it's just all right to be honest. I you know <laughs> I, I wasn't really captured by it. That's just kind of how I feel. I I feel like uh I did about from things somewhat just total like it, it, where I thought that album was kind of boring. I didn't think this one was boring necessarily. It just like wasn't very exciting. I guess if that makes us if that makes any sense. I don't know. I think when the intro leads right into the main first song, House of 1982, Built Like a Ship which is one of my favorite songs of all fucking time. I love that goddamn song so much. It's, it's probably the song. best song. Yeah. Yeah. It is the best song. It's it's arguably their best song. That it's easily chord the most progression well is so fucking crispy. But the way it leads like, right into I like, it. I like the line, what are you offering? Is it free? Because <laughs> uh, I just like, I like that that's the follow up question. Like, I don't even know what the concept there is. I don't know what he's specifically talking about. I don't know, like, we're offering what. But yeah. I do like that the very next follow-up question is, is it free? Is it free? I remember <laughs> that part, too, because it's really catchy. I, that's the thing. There's tons of admirable moments on here. but uh, And sometimes even, like, great moments where I'm like, that's a really good refrain. But I don't know. They just I just feel like they don't bring it on a lot of the other stuff. Ah, I disagree. I, I think they bring it just fine. I the the problem and this is just an issue with indie rock is that so many things can be categorized as indie rock because it's independent rock you know it it it's so there's a sound there is kind of a sound there is a that. sound i mean when you think of like the modest mouse built to spill and well, obviously the guys take how you're that. talking about indie rock cuz like are you talking about indie rock as like music I, I would say like serious music hobbyists, not to gatekeep the hobby but like people who are super super into music call indie music or is this like indie music in your record store where you know godspeed you my black emperor is right next to built to spill like sonically they're totally different but it's independent you know what i mean yeah like, exactly. independent and i think yeah, i think I, that I gets blurred saying. a bunch so i don't think it's fair to just write it off like like oh independent rock from 2011 i mean you gotta understand 2011 that was 10 fucking years ago so i mean this is like old, this is like technically an old record it, it's just that's that's the problem with that genre is that I, that genre needs a good facelift at this point, I think, because so many things I think keep getting written off because of that. I also think that music that sounds like Driftless Pony Club has basically existed since the 80s because you could listen to this. You can go back to Dinosaur Jr. or Mission of Burma. Uh, there are absolutely parallels from 30 years prior. You know, I just wish there was something sonically that set them apart from the past. I, I guess that's fair. I, I think it's the lyrics and the concept that that helps, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's it's a big a likable part. record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's a really likable record. And the thing is, too, is like this is a YouTube band, and I think we're forgetting of like how old YouTube is at this point, and mus that famous musicians, for better or for worse, that have come out of that scene. This is one of them. Uh, the only other one we've talked about was uh, First of October. Uh, so light nine, no big surprise here. It's a Chaz Core staple. It was going to be a season one pick for Christ's sake. Do you think? Uh, do you think you admire it more because you're a Buckminster fan, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Wheezy <laughs> Waiter fan as well? Like, uh, well, that's that the anything? thing. Yeah, I was a huge Wheezy Waiter fan back in the day. But even if I didn't have that context, I think the music here is just so fucking catchy, and I love how dirty the guitars sound, how uh, distinct Craig's vocals are on it. But the synth work underneath adds a lot to the music and the concept I'm just fascinated by. Uh, and I think it's explored really well in a night tight 30 minutes. It's just solid. I, I think it's great. And I, and maybe because I don't listen to Modest Mouse or Built to Spill like June does, I can appreciate it more. And I have those bands to compare to. I like my indie true, rock like, as obscure as it gets. <laughs> that's like kind of true, though, because like if you don't know about all the stuff that came before, I mean, you see that a lot with new music listeners. You know what I mean? Like um, I'm not saying you're a new music listener, but just like people who are getting into music for the first time, they're listening to new shit. You know the people I mean? who listen to Beach House and they're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. I think a better <laughs> example would be like, like, what's like an um, 
Stella Donnelly, right? Like that's a cool indie rock record, but people, right. I think it's cool, but because I've heard some older stuff, I'm a little, I'm not as sold on it. I'm just like, hey, I think this is cool, but it blows people's fucking minds because they've never heard a sound like that. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's cool. It doesn't matter. You know, most of the, you know, um, not a big deal, but it's, it's just a phenomenon we see in music listening. Yeah. Like, like there are singer songwriters that would blow your fucking mind if you had never heard shit from the 60s because you would think, you know, you would, you would have no, uh, measuring stick so to speak you'd have no template you'd have nothing to go off of so and you some, would just yeah your mind blown. And, and that can be cool whatever as, gateway it's just drug. as valid as listening to the old shit and having yep. that blow your mind as well absolutely we should give our scores i'm giving this a strong six okay with like okay. a decent or a strong five i just thought it was cool it's whatever <laughs> i thought it was just cool. kind of meant five it'll it'll be a technicality <laughs> on the worst list what is better really start what, fucking what it, up. Uh, i've been doing pretty good so far brian if you had to yeah. choose between the three driftless pony cub hats or something some that. What would you listen to? I'll put I'll do you one better. I'll put I'll put them in order. Okay. Your tough. take on hats is still fucking. This abysmal. is tough. Frumping somewhat's probably at the bottom. That's tough. I don't know. <laughs> These are so I, I I kinda have the same feeling about this and hats. I mean, I like the aesthetic of hats more. And I think they both have equally mem- an, an equal amount of memorable moments. This is shorter than hats. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving on. That's what we're doing. Is moving. I'll put on hats. Right I think I'd have to put hats first. That's damn. Insane. Fuck. I was gonna say if you chose mine, I'd be like, even in mediocrity, I win. But yeah, no. Even, no I just. I yeah, think hats is a little more uh, <laughs> unique. So to, so. That's I fair. think that that give it give it the edge. Still don't care for it. But. Moving on. So the album that I chose is a classic of YouTube algorithm core, classic of Zoomer internet rediscoveries. And but it's it is, good. And but it came out in Japanese. the 80s. How can you call something Zoomer if it came out in the fucking 80s? How does that Cause work? Because it's, it's famous on YouTube. Because uh, that's how people learned about it. Yeah. I mean, I not, to, upon like a not to rehash album? this joke, but I bet if I was a little Asian boy or a little J- Japanese boy, you know, back in the day, I was bopping this shit all day. Americans had no you were idea. Like ahead of the curve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> interesting <laughs> brag. It's a very interesting. I was brag. listening it's- to Fishman's Hiroshi. I just had all the good shit. If you know Chaz's I mean? life was totally different, he would, be, <laughs> he would still be based. Surprising. This no reminds one. me. This is a random, but there's a great episode, "Time to Show My Age," of Angry Video Game Nerd, where he reviews. Uh, Back to the Future games, and he finally finds a good one, and it was only released in Japan, and he was so pissed. He's like, we get these shitty games, but not that one? Like, what? It's good. <laughs> Why would you bury it? Hiroshi Yoshimura, Wave Notation 1, Music for 9 Postcards. This record kind of blew up on Rate Your Music over the past couple years, uh, and rightfully so in my mind, because it's one of the best simple ambient records that I've ever heard very much in that music for airports that classic early just about uh, the mention right. music for airports it's simple piano led ambient mm-hmm. yes yeah, very very simple uh just like electric piano um similar to Brian Eno's work from the 80s Pretty similar to, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but like Eric Sati, mm-hmm. the uh, minimalist composer, um, whose piano pieces are still to this day, like ubiquitous. Uh, one of the first people to really set the stage for ambient music for something as sparse as this. This is very sparse. There's not very much happening here at all. Most of the tracks are... Literally One a chord and then some riffing. That's all. <laughs> like a and bass chord. Melodies back to back, right? Like he'll, and they'll mm-hmm. just not loop, right? But just play over and over again. Um, I, okay, quick question. How'd you all listen to this? How did you all get your, like, get your, so I am the biggest ambient junkie here. I You're think. You're saying like what platform, but, I mean, so not necessarily what context. From, from that perspective, the way I listen to ambient music is that I just, sit and listen i try not to what platform what platform should you use spotify fuck okay how did you listen I to YouTube. 
I downloaded oh. it and listened to like high it make, quality flack or whatever. I used YouTube. I thought it would be appropriate to get the YouTube compressed quality. Which, by the way, I don't think really played a big factor. It actually made honest. it worse. It might have made things buzzier. <laughs> it probably made it sound buzzier, but you know. Well, I, I thought what you were referring to, Brian, because in, in the group chat, you mentioned that you like ambient, like listening to ambient music for you is better when you're doing something. And while I think that's valid for me the best way to listen to ambient music to know if you truly will like it is if you're doing absolutely nothing or doing something very minimal so you can fully listen to what and this that was the kicker for ambient selective works volume two, volume two was that you know upon doing that for the length of that record is you know because we've, we've talked a lot about it a lot of different ambient stuff we've talked to coma macintosh plus i guess i'll count hats um to mention that record again some Apex Twin, uh, Biosphere. Honestly, this tops Biosphere so much. I, I and Aww. you've got the Virgin Biosphere and the Chad Hiroshi. Like that is just no. That's <laughs> not true. You don't have to compare. Them. <laughs> no, we have too. Like our that. history in the show is too long to not make callbacks like that. We have. That to. being said, it's the Virgin selected ambient works and the Chad notations. But go ahead. <laughs> um. Well, it depends on which volume you're talking about. Talking about volume one. Volume one tops it all. That album is so fucking amazing. But we're talking about music for postcards. Is that what it's fucking called? That's music pretty close. for nine postcards. Why nine specifically? What are these postcards? I have no clue. <laughs> very post, I, it's a very post rock album. Oh my like god! It. Yeah. So yeah, this is like words. I mean, I think it should be no surprise, but this literally is the blueprint for the Minecraft soundtrack. I mean, the keyboards sound so fucking similar, and the way that they, the song, like travels the way the song like flows is so so similar to minecraft i mean i wouldn't even begin yeah. to be surprised if what's what's his name c148 is that his name c418 c418 was like yeah music for nine postcards that that was like a big this is like the bridge between saucy and then like eno's music for airports and then c418 I mean, like, really, it literally is. The that's kind world. of the missing. But it, like, if you're looking for the Minecraft soundtrack, but from the 80s, it's this. The keyboards no and yeah. the way. Um, I could see. I like saw the green texture, the grass texture. Like when you boot up, boot up a new world. I literally was like, this is fucking when Minecraft. When you first load into Minecraft, and you're like, I need to mod the textures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pure bliss. Beautiful music. It. The keys sound so fucking great. I love that it's not just pure piano. I love that it's kind of like an organy synth. Yeah, it's like an electric piano. I, it, that's a nice touch. I think you couldn't have done any other instrument. I think it had to be. It, it adds a new agey kind of sound to it as well. Um, and I do think that Hiroshi Yoshimura worked with new age or new age artists and created a lot of new age music, uh, and it definitely has that vibe. It definitely has that like semi spiritual sort of vibe to it. But it's very quiet. It's not a celebratory album. It's more of a so. I don't know. It's it's is that where this discussion is going to go? What emotion yeah. did this provoke out of you? Because I got semi bittersweet, but mostly just at peace. That's what I got. Peace. Pure, yes. like at peace. No, no, like I saw some comments being like, like it, it, apocalyptic after the after the fact or something. I'm like, nah, nah. I don't think it's that extreme. I think it's the perfect music to summarize when something feels uh, at peace. I mean, I mean, it's the perfect way to describe it. I don't want to call it bittersweet. I mean, a few tracks are a little bittersweet, but I think the main focus is that just I'm contempt. I am I'm one with myself, you know, that it, that's the kind of uh, emotion and, and thought that I get out of it. The majority of the times that I listened to this album, uh, and I've probably heard it six or seven times because really it feels easy. such it feels such a specific niche, right? There's not a lot else that I can go to and I want something that sounds like this um, that I've heard so far. Uh, it was in the morning. It was always like in the morning when I was drinking my first cup of coffee. I was at work. I was sitting at my desk. I was still in my pajamas, tired, 
uh, we don't get as many calls in the morning. So like I have the time to listen to a record, but I don't want to listen to anything too loud or exciting requires because i'm too tired necessarily yeah i don't want to listen to anything that requires a whole lot of attention you know Brian, been a your, lot of instances. your room was right next to me and i didn't want to listen to any like mm-hmm. i also wasn't really sludge metal or anything <laughs> and you know so early in the morning if you'd gone to bed like a couple hours earlier or whatever so i had a bit of an ambient phase for a few months um Whenever you were going to bed at like 7 a.m. or whatever. I mean, whatever. fuck, I middle school me would have been all over this because that was when my huge yeah. ambient phase kicked in. Was Like, that's when I was popping coma all fucking day. I would have I would have loved this shit. All, this uh, is coma. like... <laughs> popping this, coma. This record is like fever medication. Like, it's... You could... No matter... If you're in a, a rough spot, like, put this album on and it is a, it is a salve. You know, like, you don't... like. For the most part, whenever I'm sick or whatever, I don't like listening to to music because it's so hard to like. It feels like I have to put forth effort to concentrate. Yeah. On it, um, like if I'm super sick, I'm not going to listen to the death metal record or whatever. But I could put on this record. It's like the musical equivalent to watching a Bob Ross episode. Facts. You facts. know, just super peaceful, super calming, beautiful, uh, and. S- simple as well and in a really good way so to talk about the actual songwriting it feels a little improvisational i Mm. wouldn't necessarily call it fully composed i think a lot of it it kind of gives me a uh uh just house wolf kind of vibe where it's like he the the guy just knows his his way around the keyboard enough to where he kind of knows how he wants it to to flow with each uh note choice I, I it's obviously not as like complicated as like what we listen to of anna though because um you know this it definitely feels like he just picks phrases or mm-hmm. chords that are fitting the atmosphere that he's trying to set with these kind of low uh i think there's like low bass tones the whole time thing is like when you're listening to this thing yeah yeah the, ba- the background and by the way like when i'm when i say i'm doing that i'm playing like text-based games that don't have any sound or anything like that like i am just listening to the music but i, I just need to occupy my hands there's not the type of person that can you know like all i do that sometimes but here is a sound which here means focus entirely on the music um so oh what was i saying yeah he'll just pick phrases or like little melodies or little chords and play them across you know whatever key he happens to be in while these low bass tones kind of sit underneath the songs then um the keys resonate in a way that got kind of buzzy i maybe it was the youtube way i was listening but you know i'm a purist and um that those sound really pretty and are really hypnotic i listened to this thing loud as fuck when i had it on because i thought it was so wonderful when the keys that uh and i love this quality and pianos are just uh you know uh uh piano organ etc the key based instruments that aren't keyboard you know that have percussive elements right with the hammer striking the strings um they just buzz and resonate in a way that's just super infatuating to me it's just like yeah that sounds so awesome um so those parts of the album are really pretty i don't remember individual songs so much i do remember i would get to certain like i wouldn't i wasn't watching the track list i didn't feel like that was a way to do it necessarily sometimes i'd look over and try to see where i was at but i don't think it really mattered to be honest um because they would there would be parts that would come back and i was like oh i love that part and that happens like three or four times the song that like would always stick out to me when it would start playing and it would always make me look at my phone was dance pm i think that's the most distinct song I would say, because yeah, every time that would that would it would get to that point in, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, here we go. I didn't even realize yeah, the songs are distinct here. Like they do fade out and then a new one will come in. But I don't know. I, I'm just riding the vibes. If I'm being 100. Really? Well, yeah, it's a very consistent li- listen. You could honestly say it's just one whole song. You know that, or with just different movements. Like exactly. it's, it's an ambient record. It's and it's not to the degree of different difference between the songs that like uh selected ambient works and uh coma were right or even mm-hmm. biosphere which has a lot of distinct moments right so anyway i guess like the crux of what i'm saying here is like i love the vibe the sound creates i love the sounds i love it's just so minimal um i've heard music for airports and it's cool i like how pretty the pianos are on it but i love this one a little bit more because it just takes it to the next level i feel like with the resonance of the keys and the um it just feels spacier. And there's a weight. And there's peaceful. a weight to every note played, and I think, and yeah. it and it evokes such an emotion. 
that that's what good ambient should do is that it should it just puts me in a image. trance yes it should it should and that like never happens i don't i don't know much i can think of like the swans record we talked about puts me in a trance and this record puts me in a trance i don't really know much outside of those that really truly i could say put me in a state where i'm just you know hollowed out to some degree and i'm just you know I'm, I'm riding the vibe, fucking man. ethereal I mean, yeah fucking yeah, yeah I'm like i'm fucking hopping out of this body what's this uh there's a good youtube comment i'll have to see if i can find it but that described it oh i forgot i existed listening to this it's kind of like that like that's that seems pretty accurate but I'm it's gonna, obviously kind of a meme but. i'm gonna go with a light eight this was pretty solid uh ambient music uh definitely one of the better ambients we've listened to on the show it invokes an emotion out of me uh one that i haven't heard kind of displayed in ambient music before so i really enjoy for that and i think just how simple it is really shows how less is more sometimes and this is a great example of that all you need is really a keyboard and some know-how and you can make some fucking great music you know i'm jealous of all those little japanese boys back in the 80s who got their hands on this before we did but thank you go- them, man. Little <laughs> japanese boys i hate them for that i resent them for it <laughs> that's my choice uh i go with like a light to decent eight too i thought this was really really good I think it's my favorite ambient we've talked about for the show, honestly. Not maybe my favorite ambient in general, but um, it's 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 up there. It's up there. I, this is definitely more like ambient than Colma is. Like Colma is kind of a mix of things. So like as yeah. far as just true, pure, true ambient, pure ambient, base ambient, ambient, yeah, this is definitely up there. Classical ambient, I guess you could call it. You know, I mean? I'm rolling my eyes as I say <laughs> Neo, that. But just to well, apparently there's like so again, I don't know. Neoclassical, neoclassical <laughs> ambient. Is that going to be a yeah, thing now? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's eighty, so it's not neoclassical. It's just classical. Anyway, yeah, but you know, it just to give you an idea. Yeah, it's, it's my. You know favorite when? Do you, you know when modern classical music started? Can you name a year, please? Can you name Dude, like a your decade? Your connection is super bad, right? Can you name like a decade? I can't even see you. Uh-huh. Chaz, we better just move on. We don't. I just, we can get her number and put it in post. I am giving this <laughs> like a strong eight. I am considered a light nine, and I still don't know. And it could easily go up to a light nine. My pick was the 2015 pop record from English people band. Everything, everything. They're from the uh, British side of the sea. What? Why don't you <laughs> start over? <laughs> Start over. Start oh. over. And save the name of the album this time, you little shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fucking Peter Griffin laugh. <laughs> hey, mm-hmm. hey, June. Hey, hey June, Lars. look, I'm going to fuck up this intro on purpose. I'm going to shit out of my own ass. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Ass shitter. <laughs> I picked the 2015 pop record Get to Heaven from Manchester-based pop group Everything Everything. They've been around since 2010. They have five records in total. This is their third. Yeah, this album was uh, pretty big in the year it came out. It was on a lot of year end lists, et cetera, and so on. And but it really, what matters most here is it's it's Chaz core. I think I thought to my core it was Chaz core. I, I have we've had forced each other to listen to like fucking 52 albums. Just Probably like more than I've that. Heard, I've heard, no, that's just from Chaz. <laughs> like. <laughs> so, you know, that's oh, per and we're just getting so started, baby. Oh, oh shit! No, that's just from each individual. So I think I roughly have an idea of what Chaz likes, or that's the thing. You know, or I'm so unpredictable attention. that I can be predictable. And yet, this is a this is a pretty big test to see if I understand Chaz's taste because June clearly understands mine. She can just pick a fucking you know Brian Core record. She just grab that shit. Uh, there's a motion you can't see here. Uh, if I want to, you, I can do June Corn pretty easily, but it's got to be a niche. Like if I do all girls, see, the indie, thing is like, bedroom it has pop, to be obscure I might win. She's going to know a lot about a lot of bands, yeah. a lot in that strain. So it's a little more tricky. She's had, she's, she's got the experience at John. Or the if I just pull a post punk, like I'll probably get lucky for the, like that. That's pull like my post punk. It's not a skateboard dream. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. I, I thought this would be Chance Corn. Because uh, I think this album is fucking incredible. It's maybe my favorite pop record. If one of definitely my favorite pop records. I don't even know where to begin. Like the first six songs on this thing are incredible. Like that run of tracks is pretty much flawless uh, to me. Like I love listening to the first leg of this album. And the second half has got a lot of good shit in it too. Um, there's not really a bad moment there's definitely not a bad moment there's really not a dull one either i'd argue i'd argue um, that zero pharaoh is the weakest track though 
I would tend to agree. I like I like Warm Healer quite a bit. I like No Reptiles quite a bit. Blastors is good. So yeah, I mean Zero Pharaoh is probably my least favorite. But when it's not, you know, when it's on, it's no complaints. You know what I mean? Like it's not a perfect record, but it's really right, it comes right. close. I think. So a lot of the sound you're getting on this thing to describe it a little bit is um I feel like progressive pop is a good way to put. It. There's a lot of like art pop lot of too. motion. There's a lot of motion in the instruments. Um, lyrically, I definitely think it's kind of art pop. They use there's a lot of imagery and not some straightforward lyrical moments. Um, you know, lots of poetic turns of phrases. There's a lot of motion in the instruments, so to speak. The keyboards are always like tinking away and always have like very uh, kind of syncopated melodies going on. There's uh, some pretty awesome sounding guitar work on here. It, it's kind of intricate in its arrangement. And that's great because the more you, I come back to it, the more I realize just how much really is going on in the songs. Yeah, I, a lyric, I, a songwriting perspective. Look, not many people could write this many great pop songs like back to back to back. Like this is a fantastic, this is like a songwriting showcase for this band. So catchy, so memorable, and so different, the, the tracks on this album. You know, it's been talked about to death, I think, uh, as far as like people's favorite pop album. See, I've never heard of this band year. or this project in my life, so mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't is, agree um, with that. <laughs> you know, I just think it's awesome. And like I said, I tried to pick it to Pop Chaz, which I'm going to do a few times this time around. Try to dominate his list with easy picks that June has already heard. Uh, so that's it. I just think it's an incredible pop album. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for, did I like it? I did. It was pretty good. So, yeah, it's some damn good pop. I mean, what can you say? The choruses, hot damn. I Dude. would disagree, though. It's from track two to six. That's pretty spectacular. Oh, you spectacular. don't like To The Blade? I do not like To The Blade. Oh, but, really? Like, it's I love fine. that huge moment. The melody like, in the, the verses is pretty in. nice, but I don't care for the chorus. It's just so obnoxious, oh, honestly. Really? It's kind of obnoxious. Oh, um, but then Distant passed, and it's like, okay, now the album has started. Like, I just kind of ignore. <laughs> you don't like that riff? That riff is so epic. <laughs> From Distant Pass to The Wheel is Turning Now, yeah, pretty spectacular pop. Whew, dude, hard to beat. Hard it, to beat. Yeah, because, and, and it's not like, it's it's similar to me personally to like Driftless Pony Club, where it's a certain moment, and it's just like, that makes the song for me. For distance past, it's the it's the repeating of the distant past, distant past. Take me mm. to a distant past. That used to be yeah. my favorite song. I think my favorite song now is probably ah, I love regret. regret. Yeah, I love regret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean regret is so fantastic. Get to heaven. Get to heaven is a the strong fucking second. chorus. Regret, regret, regret. Spring, so sun, awesome. winter, dread. Uh, I don't want to get old. Yeah, that's awesome. The wheel is turning now. How does that one go? Um, uh, the wheel is turning now. Yeah. It's like a chill one after they fucking. So fucking this album is like, front loaded as fuck. <laughs> like, no, I don't come care. Come on, man. That back half no, is it's not weak about sauce. That, that back no, half is weak dude. sauce. I mean, Please. No Reptiles is like the only gem in that back half. No Reptiles is okay, fucking. All great. right, hold on. The blast doors, <laughs> thank you. I don't okay. care. Nope, don't care for blast doors. Oh. Blast Doors and Zero Pharaoh, I don't really care This was for. my fear, dude. This was yeah. my biggest fear. Fortune 500 was pretty nice, and Warm Healer was a very beautiful closer. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to my biggest issue. And this is probably going to be the most controversial take of the entire episode. It's the vocals. No, it's the lyrics. Oh, okay. Uh, so That is kind of controversial. So I don't I think... You. <laughs> I don't think the band explores its topics as much as I think they should. I think they go very surface level with it to the point where it's like, clearly I need to feel something from these lyrics. I just don't like reading through the genius lyrics and, and all the lyric quotations. Yeah. And all yeah. that they wanted to, to get through and, and you know, what was going on at the time the album was released. I'm just like, if you hadn't told me that, I never would have gotten that from like half these songs. I mean, I really think they could have gone way more in depth with these uh, with the topics here to make it that much more interesting. Because they're trying to do the thing where it's like, we're going to write a sad song, but make it happy as shit, you know? And a lot of bands, most of the time that just happens by accident. Uh, I think when you try to do that, it just comes up short. And this is a great example of that, where 
like clearly I, they're trying to get me to feel something with these lyrics and it's just not working but as it's not trying to manipulate you dude just ride the vibes dude. You're, you're, i do you're of, i do from you're... track two to six man i'm riding the vibe the course oh that are... was like my biggest fucking fear because the back half is like look i think it's really good the back half but it does kind of pale in comparison to everything that came before it but yeah. that doesn't hurt it so much for me because like, I because oh but this is my the biggest songwriting fear. the production I love the vocals I really like his voice sometimes like in Fortune 500 or Blast Doors I don't really care for his inflections that's kind of annoying personally uh, where he's kind of doing like this rapping Ed Sheeran kind of thing where I I don't care much I for didn't, I I don't <laughs> I dislike your Ed Sheeran comparison. <laughs> But overall, it's a great, it, it's pretty spectacular pop. I mean, you it, like I can't believe that this this band wrote tracks two to six. I mean, those are pretty spectacular. Damn. Ah, oh, that back half though, and and just the lyrics. I, do you think it's a bad back half, or do you just think it's it's like, just what a is... weak back half? I, I don't mind it when do it's think, on. But how does the how does how does they how does it hold up on its own? Do you think like, on, its just own, on its own? Like well. I don't know if you want to like, know that. You, like, well, no, like no, I would give like, the back think... half a five, okay. and the maybe the first half like an eight. Yeah, I mean, I I can see where you're coming from. I you know what I mean. I'm not to that degree, right? But, but I, you get where I, I'm coming I, I, from. Like, if we're talking one to six, like, and honestly, like, if no reptiles didn't exist in that back half, we would be struggling. I mean, no reptiles really saves that back half to where it's like, Damn. okay, we kind of come back full circle because the 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 refrain on no reptiles is bliss i love that shit so much so Man. i don't know what do you think june do you concur no, or do you disagree <laughs> i don't want to get hurt i don't want to be hurt again this was, a, hurt hey, this. this was a good attempt brian you you kind of you kind of scratched you kind of scratched it but you can do better i know you can do better i have a list of albums <laughs> for Chaz appreciation week i i so. know you did you show june the list june do you think there's some be better hitters in that list of brian's for for Chaz appreciation I don't know what that list is. Oh, I thought you were going to show, show you. That list. Uh, Brian said he was going to show you, so I don't know if he did or not. Wait, Brian, you can do better. Fucks, Brian, stuff that's pretty. you can do better because here. This was supposed to fuck and be pretty. I don't understand. <laughs> the the quickest way to my heart is catchiness. And you got that. But lyrics, man, Dude, you got it. I got thought it. I nailed it. I no, thought I fucking look, nailed it. Look, the thing I did, didn't have was crunchy guitars. <laughs> you got no jazz. All right. I this think that's true. Poppy. I mean, the guitars are pretty good. Crunchy. But they're yeah. Not crunchy. You yeah. try, hey, but like the anyway. synth funk kind of like boogie down thing that they're kind of doing, that that's a quick way to my heart too. You tried. It was a good valiant effort, and but I know you can do better. I know you All can right. do better. June, right. what did you, what did you I think, I will give my opinions about everything, everything. June, what do you think about my takes? What, what do you think? I understand them. Um, I actually agree somewhat, but not nearly to the extent that you do. I heard this back in 2015 when it came out and really, really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite records of the year, and it still is one of my favorite albums that came out that year. Uh, as you all mentioned, the first few tracks, like that first half of the record, those choruses are fantastic. Like, I hadn't heard this album in like four years, and I still remember like, take me to the distant past. Like, I want to go back. That's awesome. Like, I knew that, and I knew like spring, summer, winter dread, like, like I had heard them yesterday. And that's the best thing I think this band has going for it is just freaking earworms dude you gotta like, give it to the instrumentals too for that it's not all core like those fucking tr the the song like the playing underneath is so fast so intricate and really just as earwormy as the music is the song right like the choruses right and the the lyrical moments i it's, think anyway the synths add a lot really the good. synths add a lot yeah the instrumentation is really creative there's a lot of different things going on um I do think that I wish the energy from the first half continued throughout the second half, but the second half isn't bad by any means, and there are still some fantastic songs on it. I don't really get much of an emotional vibe from this record. It, like, it doesn't hit me in the feels or like really like incense me, uh, which is unfortunate. Fuck, that it, really it, that sucks so thing. bad because it definitely it gets me. To, it would have been the thing to to like 
push this up another level. And wow. unfortunately, that just didn't happen. For I me. think I it's just, the lyrics. I really think they don't go as dude, far as they see, should. That's where I disagree because, like, the three tracks that I think have the most emotional impact are right are all Scrunch Next to Get to Heaven, Regret, and Spring Summer Winter Dread. Those are the most personal, maybe, songs. Get um, to Heaven has the best lyrics. Because I think that's where it's fully realized where he keeps juxtaposition the terrible, sh- the terrible shit happening to with yeah. mundane things. That's where it's fully realized. I think every other song doesn't come what, close. Dude, I think like regret is like a perfect song too. Like the, that and get to heaven because just because like I'm regret. Honestly, that chorus way. with that chorus, it doesn't matter. He could have said monkey doo doo the whole time, and, and dude, as long as he said regret, regret, it's, it it's would kind have of true. <laughs> kind of fucking true though. Like it's just so good. Um. I don't know. I think lyrically there's and emotionally, like if you're talking about emotional appeal, there's a lot on this album. Oh, uh, I'm fucking no reptiles too, right? Um, same way. And I would say warm healer as well. So I, I you know, I, I'm sad that that is not the case. Sag, as they say, that'll date this, but. <laughs> Sheesh. Just your Sheesh. existence. Just your existence. <laughs> the most recent, like kind of cringy meme that happens you'll you'll inevitably say dating each episode you know what will never be cringe fucking dabbing dabbing will forever it's aging like wine there's a visual you can't see here but you you get a rough idea so yeah everyone likes it i mean yeah the first it has first half syndrome that is kind of like to me that's kind of undeniable but the back half has got some great moments in it and there's not a bad song on the record to me and i would 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 disagree on the lyrical points and and such but that sound uh you know can't account for taste and all that so, I'm, I'm gonna go with a strong seven, Brian. You can do better, ah, my guy. You dude, can do better. This is bullshit! You have given. I'm getting better okay, with my scores. Opinion. I'm trying to be more like, okay, this is how I feel. Dude, I'm not fucking seven, around this season. Seven feels harsh for you. I thought this was getting a strong eight on with those. <laughs> See, that's what I'm trying to get away from. That God stereotype. Brian, you could do better though. I know you know me better than that. Come on, man. This was this is one of my best. this was one of my ones that I was like, it's surefire. Hey, hey, you know what that means? Given how the cosmos works, the one you thought was gonna be the least uh like hit like heavy hitter, I'm gonna love like 10 uh, off the I bat. have five more tries. <laughs> light eight. Uh light to decent nine. Like to, I love this fucking album. I, it, you, you can just go back to it whenever, too. It's fucking awesome. All right, well, that's it for this episode. You know, with the weight of my failures on my back reducing me to a uh, turtle, turtle-like turtle stance in a slug-like state, we uh, move on to next week's episode, which will be a sequels episode in which we select previous artists. So I'm going to go back to an artist that I thought gets absolutely not nearly the amount of attention that he deserves. And I'm going to go back to the album that was kind of the cult classic that we didn't talk about, that was released over a decade after the album that we did. We previously talked about Beverly Glenn Copeland's... Oh, shit. Okay. ...self-titled release, a folk singer-songwriter, a little jazzy, a little bit of psychedelia record from 1972... Now we're going to go ahead to 1986. New age. He's working with <laughs> new age, ambient pop, a little bit of progressive electronic. Uh, you look at the record, you see oh, it was on cassette in 1986 and was not on anything else until a repress in 2016. Jesus Christ. This was a cult classic for a while in uh, American new age. And I actually have not heard it. And... I'm excited to hear it. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. And I just wanted to talk about Beverly Glenn Copeland again. I like to only try to pull from previous seasons. And hey, that's uh, what I do. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. So we're, this was a, this was very well liked. Um, and rightfully so. Uh, and I don't know. I just thought it'd be a good time to cover the first one. I feel like it's important to get variety week to week. And so I'm going to pick uh, Anna Von Housewolf, Dead Magic. Let's get to the, you know, oh, we're not okay. at the roots here, but we're going to do her most popular work, her most acclaimed work so far. May even go back and do the other one as well. Uh, the Miracle, I think it's called. But this is this is like, you know, we got to do this one. This is a must visit for us, I feel like, just because of how well the second one went over with everyone. So, yeah. And I'm just going to throw a wrench in everybody's plan because we're kind of have like a niche, like kind of ambient, neoclassical, kind of in that vein. Fuck all that shit. 
Acid bath. We're back, baby. Pagan terrorism tactics. It's just as highly claimed as the uh, as the other one. When the kite stream pops, they're both bolded on rim. So I guess These we'll are see. Pretty classic sludge metal. This one's Salty seventy-three down. fucking minutes with a goddamn sixteen-plus minute hidden track at the end. Ugh. <laughs> I just only hope that it's way more better paced than the first one. So I'm I'm excited. Hopefully this one will go a little bit over better with June because she gave the first one a strong seven. So hopefully this one strong seven is a very good score. It is, but when I get an A from you, June, it's a it's a it's a. Win. I gotta tell you all something. There's a there's an album called Acid Bath by Alien Sex Fiend, and it's not what I was looking for. But I've been hurt, and now you all are hurt too. So there you go. <laughs> no, I saw that same thing, and it looks really fucking crazy. What? Yeah, it looks Jesus nuts. Christ. Oh yeah, anyway. wild. <laughs> this has been unwarranted music. Opinions. Uh, Brian Courtney is joined by June Lindbergh. Hello. And Chaz Jenkins. Sex like a bomb. Yeet. I didn't even hear what you said. And we'll see you next time. Oh shit! I hit my mic. Run, dude. End it.